A lot of people panic when they have to take some time off from the gym and worry that they're gonna lose all their progress. Heck, how many people panic over even just one or two days? But how long does it take to lose muscle when you have to take time off? What can you do to minimize muscle loss when life throws you curveballs? What I wanna to do to try to help today is show you a couple different scenarios in my life where I personally had to take a significant amount of time off from training. And I also wanna dig into some research to give us some scientific answers as to how long it takes to lose muscle and talk about what you can do to keep as much muscle as possible if you're forced to take some time off. Hey, this is Colin DeWay. If you're interested in the evidence-based approach to building muscle and losing fat and creating a better body, then make sure you subscribe and click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. So if you've been following me on Instagram, you know by now I've been posting every couple weeks about the changes happening in my body since I've been forced out of training for the most part. Long story short, I've been dealing with some eye stuff and I had to do some injections every handful of weeks and I had to back off of lifting or that could mess things up. So everything's okay, but it's been 21 weeks now. I'm finally cleared to lift and get back after it. But what was going on during that time was I would get the injection, I would have to wait two weeks and not do any exercise at all. And then until my next appointment that would usually be about another six weeks on top of that, then I could do extremely easy light lifting, nothing even close to failure, heck, not even anything close to the weight even becoming remotely challenging. So think about deload workouts, but way easier than that. And I was able to do that two to three times a week. So it really wasn't getting much of a stimulus at all. Comparing the starting picks, you can see despite not really being able to train, while there are of course some differences, you can also see it's not like I lost a ton of progress. Which for the record, since I talk a lot about the importance of resistance training, not only for fat loss, but body composition in general, I actually weigh three pounds less after not training for 21 weeks, but my waist measurement, which a waist measurement is pretty much gonna be all body fat, was up almost a full inch. I just thought that was important to mention, especially if you're someone who only tends to look at scale weight as your measure of progress. Now take that in comparison to a time back in, I think it was 2016 or 2017, where I had an eye surgery and I was forced to not do any exercise of any sort for 12 weeks after. And in this case, even though I weighed exactly the same before and after the 12 weeks, there's clearly a more drastic reduction in body composition in this case. So what does that tell us? To me, most likely it tells us that any sort of training, no matter how easy it is, no matter how light it is, if you can just show up and do anything, it's probably gonna help you with keeping your muscle. And this is just one more reason why you don't wanna fall into the all or nothing mindset. Something is always better than nothing. But hey, that's just my personal experience. That doesn't mean it's gonna be the same for everyone. Plus, we don't really know how long does it take to lose muscle. So I wanna dig into some research to see what science has to say. Now, in one case where subjects were in bed rest for a week, they actually did show there was a significant amount of muscle loss during that time. However, we have to factor in a couple important things about this. One is these individuals were not trained, so it may not be the same for someone who is trained versus untrained, as it's probably more likely to be able to keep muscle coming from a trained status. And the other thing is, this is complete bed rest. So they weren't doing anything, they weren't using their muscles at all. So it's not like they were moving around in everyday life and stuff like that. They were completely sedentary. So without any movement of any kind, it probably makes sense you'd lose muscle faster. It's the whole use it or lose it thing. Now that does bring me to a research review that did look at evidence on detraining for muscle loss. And they noted it appeared it takes at least three weeks without training for significant muscle loss to occur. Personally, I think this is a much better indicator for us because for one, now these are actually trained individuals and this was a research review, so it wasn't just one study. It was looking at the research kind of as a whole. And hey, this is a good thing. This is great, right? Like it's something that you wanna keep in mind anytime you suffer any kind of injury or any kind of life circumstance that keeps you out of the gym or at least not being able to fully train. A little time away isn't gonna make or break anything and it appears it could take a few weeks to lose anything. Now keep in mind, this is in reference to actual muscle tissue loss. A lot of people will say, no, I've had time off and I could see that I visibly look different. I felt weaker. I clearly lost muscle. That's not necessarily the same thing. 
you may very well look smaller or feel weaker because you're gonna be losing a glycogen. Your muscles are holding this glycogen and if you're not using it, it's not gonna store as much anymore. So your muscles will look less full. You won't have as much to be able to use for energy. And understand too, a lot of the strength is neural. So that's not the same thing as muscle loss. And keep in mind, anything you do lose will come back fast, but more on that later. Now this next study I wanna talk about, I personally found fascinating and really lines up well with what I experienced in my 21 weeks of not really being able to train well, but being able to at least do a little bit and it helps show that something is always better than nothing. And it was this study that showed subjects that lifted just one ninth of their normal training volume, that was enough to keep muscle for a whopping 32 weeks of time. One ninth of their normal training volume for 32 weeks, over a half a year, and they kept their muscle. So this really shows why the all or nothing mentality just makes no sense. If you just show up and do anything, and I mean anything, whether it's just body weight exercises, really light training like I did, where you're just basically going through the motions and stopping anywhere near fatigue, even just showing up for a light pump a couple times a week, anything at all, is gonna significantly help you keep the muscle you have. But if you get frustrated because you can't make progress anymore and you fall into effort mode and you completely stop training and you bend your face off because what's the point? Now you're gonna set yourself way back, you're gonna lose a bunch of muscle, you're gonna gain a lot of fat, and then what happens when it's time to get back after it again? Now you've gotta work so much harder to get even remotely close to where you used to be when all you had to do was just go through the motions and you would've stayed in a decent place. Now, one thing I do wanna mention about that study was this was shown for younger people to be true. In elderly people, it appears that they were not able to retain as much on one ninth of their training volume, but that doesn't mean there was no point, they just didn't retain as much, and perhaps that means in older people you need a little bit more volume to be able to retain as much. But no matter what, it's clearly helpful. And I think that's exactly what we saw with me in those 21 weeks. And keep in mind, I wasn't even gonna go anywhere near failure, so if you're able to just show up and train relatively intensely, even just a little bit, you're gonna be good. But the real moral of the story here is, there's a lot of good news, a ton of good news here. It's a lot easier to retain your muscle than it is to build it. And even if you can't do anything at all, it's still gonna take a few weeks to lose any actual muscle. And even if it's gonna be a long time, even if you can just show up and do virtually anything at all, you're gonna keep yourself in a pretty good place. And on top of that, even more good news, it's that muscle memory is very real. It is much easier to build back muscle loss than it was to build it in the first place. In fact, in the scenario I told you about where I had to be completely away for 12 weeks, I actually documented this on the way back, and obviously I didn't have the tools to know exactly how much muscle tissue was being lost and built, but what I did do was take measurements around my flexed arm and my thigh, and I'd taken that before and after, and it only took me six weeks after being away for 12 weeks to gain all the size back that I had previously lost. So don't freak out if you have to take some time off. Just do what you can. Keep your protein high, that will also help. And always remember, perfection is not required. By the way, if you're someone who does wanna make sure that they can build and retain as much muscle mass as possible with their diet, then make sure you check out this top video next and I'll walk you through everything you need to know about how much protein you should be eating, how you should space them out throughout the day, and everything in between. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.